it is very interesting to uh, see uh, to know who is actually a patient fit for IUI or for IVF. These are both uh, procedures which are being commonly used for assisted reproduction. Uh, whereas there are definite indications for IVF, most of the patients undergo IUI all the time. And uh, I would say that now we as patients and as doctors, we all must be very clear as to whom to subject to IUI and whom to directly take up for IVF. So IUI is, being, is done when you have normal healthy tubes and you have a normal or a nearly normal, nearly I would say mild infert, uh, male infertility. And you have a, uh, and you can produce eggs in the woman. So if these three factors are normal, then IUI works. Now you would ask me, uh, then what is the difference between a normal, uh, you know, a normal meeting or intercourse or or uh, uh, contact and an IUI? So the difference is that in an IUI, we are actually uh, washing the sperm and we are selecting uh, in the in that sense that we are washing away the dead sperms and we are selecting only the live motile fraction, concentrating it and putting it into the uterus so that it, it bypasses the cervix, it bypasses the vagina where there may be some hostility to the sperm and the sperms may die and they go into the uterus and therefore the process becomes a little better than what it would be otherwise. Hence the indications would be vaginal hostility, cervical hostility and of course factors like ovary, uh, like polycystic ovarian disease, mild endometriosis and mild male infertility and of course the segment of unexplained infertility always remains. So these are the patients essentially who can go in for an IUI. But then there is a large subset of patients where they cannot go through an IUI because they do not have healthy tubes, their tubes are blocked. That was the indication, first indication for IVF. But now polycystic ovarian disease, endometriosis, severe male infertility, unexplained infertility, third party where the eggs are not there, where the sperms are not there, where the uterus is not there. So anybody can go undergo an IVF and of course now we know that it is being extended to patients who are normal, who are not even infertile. For instance patients who want to postpone their pregnancy. So we are freezing their eggs and putting embryos back into them whenever they want to get pregnant. So that is an extension now, we are using it for normal patients. Similarly, patients who want to preserve their eggs or sperms if they, have, if they are undergoing cancer treatment because the survival rate of cancer is very good now. Hence, you freeze your eggs before you t undertake the therapy for cancer and then come back and get your embryos put back once you are free of cancer. So all that is now possible with IVF and this cannot be done with IUI. Hence, there is a marked distinction between patients who would undergo IUI versus IVF. And the most important thing which patients keep on telling us and asking and they are so, so, so uh, worried about going through an IVF, this is the last treatment, if this is fail, then what? There is no last treatment because IVF can be repeated multiple times. But the other thing is that IUI versus IVF, IUI has a very low success rate of just about 12%. 10 to 12 percent and if we are using the injections which we use for IVF then the, preg then the pregnancy rate jumps to about 20 to 22 percent whereas with IVF now the success rate has jumped to 40 to 50 percent. So here is a more effective method, a more successful method and for definite indications. So you have to be selective about what you are and then decide what kind of a treatment should be best for you. It is not a good idea to keep on doing IUI after IUI if your factors are not correct and then you think ki bhi paisa usme bohat lagta or maybe you have other apprehensions but that method is not for you. So therefore be very selective, try to use the method which is most suited to you.